what happens at the speed of light? Light is the fastest thing in the universe. It is, more or less, time. Light travels at about 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's fast enough to go around the Earth 7.5 times per second. Einstein's equations show that the faster you move, the slower time ticks for you. This is called time dilation. An accurate clock at rest, with respect to one observer, may be measured to tick at a different rate when compared to a second observer's own equally accurate clock. This effect arises neither from technical aspects of the clocks nor from the fact that signals need time to propagate, but from the nature of space-time itself. Here's how it works. C means constant. It's the speed of light and it has to be measured the same no matter how you're observing it. That causes a problem. Like, how does anything other than light even move? But that's for a different video. But anyways, to understand C, you have to see what I'm talking about. Here's a person and a cat at three different points in time. It's clear that the cat is moving away from the person, but slide the lines over, and now the person is moving away from the cat. Clearly, motion is relative. But light always has to be constant. Like in this picture. It is light moving away from a person at three different times. If we were to move it like we did earlier, C would not be constant. But we can tilt the timelines to let the person move, and the speed of light will stay constant. C we can move time because there is no law that says time needs to be constant. Time is subject to change. In this diagram, we can see that if we tilt the line for one person moving at a velocity, they would observe the simultaneous events when they occur. But a stationary person observing the events can experience them at different times. C remains the same at all times, but this shows that time is relative. Now that we have a better understanding of relativity, we can ask the question, what happens at the speed of light? Einstein famously asked the question, what would you see if you were traveling alongside a beam of light? Let's ignore, for now, the fact that we can't, and ask the question anyways. Einstein knew that the world should feel the same if you were moving at a constant velocity. These are called inertial frames of reference. As long as you're moving at a constant velocity, the laws of physics should apply in exactly the same way. And that's what we call the principle of relativity. Einstein's classic thought experiment involves sitting on a train traveling at the speed of light. If you hold a mirror in front of your face, will you see your reflection in the mirror? How could light from your face reach the mirror if the mirror is traveling away from you? but it would be a pretty spooky train if you couldn't see your reflection. So Einstein felt the solution wasn't realistic. On the other hand, if you could see your reflection, it would mean light was traveling at the speed of light inside the train. But that meant the same light observed from outside the train would be going twice the speed of light. This, again, seems inconsistent. So Einstein resolved that you must see your reflection, but that light must travel at the same speed inside and outside the train. The only way this is possible is if space and time are perceived differently by observers inside and outside the train. For both to be possible, the user has to contract in the direction it's moving and time must go slower relative to an outside observer. At C, the length would be zero, and time would stop, and their mass would be infinite. At C, a journey from point A to point B would take place in an instant. From the perspective of light, it would take no time to get from Earth to Andromeda. At C, time and space become arbitrary, and everything is simultaneous for it. Although... The most interesting part about traveling at the speed of light is the acceleration towards it. Let's assume we get in a spaceship and begin to accelerate towards the speed of light. 
For the sake of simplicity, I will only be talking about aberration, in this case light aberration. We experience aberration when, we, when it comes to rain. We, whenever we run through it, it seems like it's coming at an angle. But in the case of light, it's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, in this demonstration, I'm going to show the effects of relativistic aberration without other things, like uh, Lorentz contraction and the Doppler shift. So let's get started. At rest, in the middle of the lattice, we see a normal view, unaffected by aberration. The ship's computer displays a graphic to the left of the view screen that shows the effect of aberration on light arriving from various directions with respect to the direction we're traveling, stationary in the lattice. No aberration is indicated. Now we've accelerated to one-tenth the speed of light, and already aberration is changing our view. The display on the left shows how light from various directions, shown on the outer ring, has been displaced to the apparent directions of the lines radiating from the ship. At this velocity, aberration agrees with the classical predictions to two decimal places. Light is still behaving just like rain. We notice on the main viewer that we're seeing more of the lattice as aberration shifts objects previously outside our field of view into frame. At a quarter the speed of light, Newton is still firmly in charge. Aberration is still behaving linearly. And the contribution of special relativity is less than a quarter of a degree of the total aberration of more than 11 degrees. Half the speed of light, and we're developing eyes in the back of our head. Objects 120 degrees from the direction we're moving are shifted so they appear to our right and left. Still, relativity accounts for only about 10% of the total aberration. Three quarters of the speed of light, relativity, now accounts for a substantial fraction of the total aberration, which is already approaching the 45 degrees classical physics predicts we'd measure at the speed of light. Nine tenths the speed of light. Einstein's in our driver's seat now. Light rays coming from our side now appear to come from a direction about 26 degrees from the ship's bow, compared to the classical prediction of 48 degrees. More and more of the lattice seems to be before us now, even though we're observing from a point in the middle. 95% of the speed of light. The compression towards our direction of travel continues. Relativistic effects now dominate. 99%. Only objects almost directly astern still appear to be behind us. Now we're only one part in a thousand slower than light. Even objects five degrees from our stern now enter the field of view looking in the direction of travel. Extreme distortion of the objects behind us becomes apparent. And finally, we view the lattice from the midpoint at a velocity of 0.9999 of the speed of light. The cell of the lattice directly behind our ship has been distorted by aberration to almost fill the field of view. The rest of the lattice is reduced to a small grid in the center of the main viewer. And that's what happens at the speed of light. Is it intuitive? No. But if physics was done by intuition, we wouldn't need physicists.